Welcome to the unit on methods to identify inspirational sources. The use of inspiration varies in different contexts, but the same fundamental functions of sources of inspiration remain constant for all the different fields. The objective of this unit is to explain the vital importance of sources of inspiration in the design process. To non-designers who might perceive the designer's study of fashion and artwork as artistic self-indulgence. At the same time, this course can reassure designers that their working style reflects a wider practice in the industry. At present, designers get little support or encouragement to do research. This unit gives a straightforward guidelines for how surface embellishment and textile companies can support their designers in their use of sources of inspiration. This unit also provides an overview of the surface embellishment process and explains how sources of inspiration are employed. It also addresses the question of how design performance can be improved through better support of sources of inspiration for surface embellishment in textiles and garments. By the end of this unit, students will be able to identify the different natural man-made sources around them as possible starting point for a project. Distinguish between motifs, patterns and textures as well as select an appropriate source of inspiration for a given project. To a designer, anything that sparks off a design idea can be a source of inspiration. The source of inspiration play a crucial role throughout the whole design process. However, different types of sources are important at different stages. This module focuses on the significance of nature, history and man-made objects and explains how they can serve as source of inspiration. Anything visual can be a source of inspiration. For a design from a John Galliano garment to plate of baked beans. Designers are mainly interested in the visual appearance and the connection of the objects and seldom in the conceptual integrity of the design. Different sources of inspiration can be combined in one garment, a designer garment, a Roman ornament or an even piece of tree bark. Even though the use of source of inspiration is entirely pragmatic, it is possible to identify different types of source of inspiration, performing different roles. The importance of effective design management and the significance of the early stages of the design process are well recognized in the other design-led industries, but little understood in the textile industry. In the textile industry, the designers use other garments, photographs of the garments from the history, art objects and natural phenomenon as inspirational for the designs. It is generally recognized that these sources of inspiration helps designers to create a feature of individual designs, such as different textures, motifs and patterns in textile design. But the sources of inspiration also play a powerful role in the beginning of the design process in research and strategic collection planning. They also play an essential role in the communication of design ideas both among designers and between designers and managers and buyers. Gathering sources of inspiration costs time and money. Many studios and officers attempt to save money by limiting the designers traveling time to see shops and shows. They also do not purchase forecasting materials. This has a number of harmful effects on the design process. It reduces the designer's job satisfaction and accelerates staff turnover. It also limits the range of ideas designers use, so that the design becomes stereotype. The cost of travel to shops and fashion shows and the purchase of art, history, nature books and CD-ROMs is small, compared to the potential profit on successful design. Textiles or fabrics are sold on their visual and tactile appearance. Within the same price bracket, 
customers select on subjective preferences. Newly purchased garments must look new and modern. Designers in the textile industry are under constant pressure to develop new design ideas. A design must catch the mood of the season. Fashion changes very quickly and continuously poses new challenges to resources and skills. In the early 90s, garments were still mainly sold on patterns and fancy structures. Current fashion demands simple, elegant surface embellishments with interesting shapes. Design research, that is gathering background information for design, including styling, current and future fashion trends, defines the range of possibilities for designs within the scope of fashion and the target markets. It provides and so the source of inspiration designs are based on and enables designers to relate their designs to context of fashion. The quality of designs depends not only on the designer's talents but also on the quality of their design research. Only extensive research enables designers to stay fresh and keep up to date with developments. Many designers gather sources of inspiration in their own time. They look through fashion magazines, art books at home. They go to museums on the weekends or while holidaying and collect natural objects on Sunday walks. Most designers I have talked to have commented that they have to fight to go to shops and foreign shopping trips because these are the considered too expensive and time consuming. It is important to note that these research trips are very intensive and exhausting. However, many designers comment that they are also the most productive design times when they plan most of their collections. Ideas created in this short space of time are used through the year. Designers are often very unsatisfied because their design research is not valued within a company. They view it as a dis regard for their own creative work. Many designers are already frustrated because of the pressure of the market. Give them little artistic freedom, the turnover of the designers in companies can be high. Many themes take their inspiration from nature. Designers are inspired by animals, plants and other natural objects as well as natural phenomena such as thunderstorms or sunsets. Designers collect portable physical objects such as leaves or shells, use photographs or work from memory. Designers never stop looking for the source of inspiration. When they see something suitable, they turn it into a design. The inspirational opportunities present in the natural world around us could make an entire post all on their own. They are literally thousands, if not millions of things to be inspired by around the world and in our own backyards. Birds, trees, animals, bugs, the sky, the mountains, the valleys, deserts, rivers, lakes, the list could go on forever. When you are lacking inspiration, try taking a walk through a nearby field, park, forest or other natural spaces. Look around the shapes and textures of things, the colors, the patterns, and anything else that catches your eye. You are almost sure to find something you can apply to your projects if you take the time to look. Obviously, the natural world is all around us. Even if we live in an urban area, just look at the grass growing up through cracks in the sidewalk or birds in a park. Here are some ideas for finding even more inspiration. They are Flickr groups and National Geography. Flickr groups are a great source of find inspiration, natural photography. There are few specific groups to try. Spectacular Nature, Nature and Wildlife Photographers, Corner, The World's Best Nature Wildlife and Macro Photography, nature, wildlife and the great outdoors. Whether you look through new or old issues, National Geographic is a field filled with amazing natural photos on stories. 
there are plenty of inspiration on their website too. English textile artist Leslie Richmond is not only a creator but a teacher as well. Leslie is one of the most widely represented textile artist in the world. Born in Cornwall, she is now resident at Vancouver, Canada. Her works have been on display in several countries around the world including Poland, China, Korea as well as US and Canada. Her works has also been featured in numerous books on the subject of textile art including textiles, the art of mankind and the art textiles of the world Canada. Leslie's main inspiration since the beginning of her career has been natural forms. Her mantra is to create pieces that appear organic regardless of the material that has been used. In particular, she is inspired by trees and forest. Two of her most popular series are in fact named Leaf of Distant Forest. Her current series is entitled Tree or Forest. For each of these series, Leslie harnessed her photography skills, snapping pictures of trees and forest. Then she had them printed on the fibers, editing them to filter out an background. As a result, the pieces she created appear visually appealing and incredibly detailed. Sloban Henley and Mary Red Brooke are both Irish artists and for the past several years they have been working together to create textile art that astonished viewers. Their practices is fairly unique. When worked on a new piece of together, they harness their individual skills in very efficient and creative way. Sloban focuses more on finalizing the design and inspiration, while Mary Red takes care of the colors and materials to be used. Another unusual, though not unique, aspect of their work as textile artist is that the duo work to order create custom piece for their clients on commission. Their focus is on producing top quality felted pieces. Through their tried and tested methods, they have built a loyal following and impressive body of work. Designers look their repeat patterns, ornaments and motifs. Other textiles are often used as source of inspiration for patterns. They provide rich source of ornamental and patterns for examples in embroideries, rugs uh, or tie patterns. All other designs objects with patterns such as tiles and mosaics serves as source of inspiration. Designers frequently use historic design such as William Morris wallpaper and fine art can also provide a rich source. Everyday objects such as sweet wallpapers are also useful. Some designers also use historic garments as inspiration, most famously Weebleen Westwood. Some companies have archives of their own old designs or antique garments bought in form of other sources. The world of architecture and interior design holds a huge variety of potential sources of inspiration and there likely an artistic style out there for every taste and project. From vernacular architecture of modern minimalism to art deco and everything in between, there is almost certainly an architectural style out there that can be adapted to your project. The number of architectural styles is really astounding, but here are some of the more recent prominent and interesting ones to get you started. They are Art Novo, American Craftsman, Pearly School, Art Deco, International Style, Mid-Century Modern and Postmodern. We will now look at each of these. Art Novo. Art Novo was a popular style around the turn of 20th century, roughly 1819 to 1905. That fell out of style as the modernist movement took hold. The style is defined by violent curves, often called whiplash motifs and dynamic undulating lines. It was one of the inspiration for the psychedelic 
art movement of 1960s. A great example of Art Nouveau architecture is the Museum of Applied Art in Budapest. American Craftsman American Craftsman, also known as American Art and Craft, it was popular in the late 19th century through the beginning of the 20th century and still enjoys revivals of to the present day. It emphasized locally crafted wood, glass, metal works that co combined simplicity with elegance. Great examples can be numerous. Craftsman style bungalows across the United States. Prairie School Prairie school designs which were popular in the late 19th century and early 20th centuries generally includes a lot of horizontal lines, a desire to blend with the surrounding landscape and discipline in the use of ornamentation. Frank Lloyd Wright's Oak Park, Illinois home is a great example as is the Woodbury County Courthouse in Iowa. Art Deco Art Deco was a popular design movement between 1925 throughout the 1940s. It was seen as glamorous, elegant, modern and functional at the same time. The city hall of Buffalo, New York and the spire of Chrysler building in New York are both prime examples. International style International style was a major style in the 1920s and 1930s at the beginning of the modernist movement. A strict set of design rules is one of the key components of international style. Villa Savoy by Lee Kubiser and the Glass Palace in Heerland, Netherlands are both great examples. Mid-century modern the design style developed between roughly 1933 and 1965 and is a further development of both Frank Lloyd Wright's principles and Bohua's architecture. It is more organic and less format than international style. Prominent proponents include Joseph Eicher and Ludwig Mies von der Rohe, the Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco and the Concourse building in Singapore are both good examples. Postmodern Postmodern was in an international style movement that started in 1970s with roots as far as back the 1950s. It was not as formal as the international style and has more ornamentation. The Bank of America Center in Hudson, Texas is a good example of postmodern architecture. Designers attend fashion shows such as Premier Vision and Yan shows, mainly Petit Ferre and Expo Phil on the same trips they go shopping on the great fashion centers on the world, such as New York, Paris, Milan or London. They also study competitors' garments to gauge their own designs and extract information about production methods. Designers always keep their eyes open for interesting garments. They watch people on the streets or at parties and take inspiration from street fashion. In the course of studying garments, designers recognize shapes, details and motifs as prominent or everywhere in a season and apply them in their new designs. All designers study fashion photographs in magazines a photograph is re rarely shows details as clearly as the real thing. However, it provides a clear indication of the mood of the garment, its context within a collection and the projected image of the targeted customer. Fashion photographs enables the designers to gauge their understanding of the said guest. This module distinguishes the difference between motifs, patterns and textures. In fashion, a motif is an element of a pattern, image or theme. A motif may be repeated in the design or composition, often many times, or may just occur once in a while. A motif may be an element in the iconography of a particular subject, or type of subjects that is seen in other works. Ornamental or decorative art can usually be analyzed into a number of different elements, which can be called motifs. This may often, as in textiles art, 
be repeated many times in a pattern. Important examples in western art include acanthus, egg and dart and various types of scroll works. Many designs in the mosques in Islamic culture are motifs including some of the sun, moon, animals such as horse and lion, flowers and landscapes. Motifs can have emotional effects and be used for propaganda. A pattern, apart from the terms used to mean template is a discernible regularity in the word or in a manageable man-made design. As such, the elements of a pattern repeat in a predictable manner. A geometrical pattern is a kind of pattern formed of geometrical shapes and typically repeating like in wallpaper. Any of the five cents may direct observe patterns. On other hand, abstract patterns in science, mathematics of language may be observable only by analysis. Direct observation in practice means seeing visual patterns which are widespread in nature and art. Visual patterns in nature are often chaotic, never exactly repeating, are often involved fractals. Nature patterns include spirals, madness, waves, forms, cracks and those created by symmetrical of rotation and reflection. Patterns have an underlying mathematical structure. Indeed, mathematics can be seen as a search for regularities. And the output of any function is a mathematical pattern. Similarly, in science, theories explain and predict regularities in world. In art and architecture, decorations or visual motifs may be combined and repeated to form patterns designed to have a chosen effect in the viewer. In computer science, a software design pattern is a known solution to a class of problem in programming. In fashion, the patterns is a template used to create any number of similar garments. Nature provides examples of many kinds of patterns, including symmetries, trees, other structures with a fractal dimension, spirals, waves, forms, cracks, and stripes. Symmetry. Symmetry is widespread in living things. Animals that move usually have bilateral or mirror symmetry as this favors movement. Plants often have radial or rotational symmetry as do many flowers as well as animals which are largely static in adults such as C. anonymous. Fivefold symmetry is found in the echinoderms including starfish, sea urchins and sea lilies. Among non-living things, snowflakes have striking six-fold symmetry. Each flake is unique, its structure recording the varying construction during its crystallization. Similarly, each on or its six arm. Crystals have a highly specific set of possible crystal symmetries. They can be cubic or octahedral, but cannot have five-fold symmetry. Spiral patterns. Spiral patterns are found in the body plants of animals including molluscus such as nautilus and in the phyllotaxis of many plants, both of leaves spiraling around systems and in the multiple spirals found in flowers heads such as the sunflowers and fruit structures such as pineapple. Chaos theory. Chaos theory predicts that while the laws of physics are deterministic event and patterns in nature never exactly repeat because extremely small differences in the starting conditions can lead to widely different outcomes. Many natural patterns are shaped by this apparent randomness including vertex streets and other effects of turbulent flow such as maintenance in reverse. Waves. Waves are disturbances that carry energy as they move. Mechanical waves propagate through a medium, air or water, making it oscillates as they by pass by. Wind. Wind waves are surfaces waves that create the chaotic patterns in the sea. As they pass over sand, such waves create patterns or ripples similarly as in wind passes over sand. It creates patterns and duns. Forms. Forms of a plate slow which requires films to be smooth and continuous. 
and to have a contrast average curvature. Forms and bubbles patterns occur widely in nature. For example, in radio nanquis sponge species and the skeletons of silico, flagellates, and sea urchins. Cracks. Cracks form in materials to relieve stress with 120 degree joints in elastic materials, but at 90 degree in inelastic material. Thus, the pattern of crack indicates whether the material is elastic or not. Cracking patterns are widespread in nature, for example, in rocks, mud, tree barks, and the glazes of oil paintings and ceramics. Allen Toning and later the mathematical biologist James Murray described the mechanism that spontaneously creates spots or stripes patterns for example, in the skin of mammals or the plugment of birds. A reaction diffusion system involving two counteracting chemical mechanisms, one that activates and one that inhibits a development, such as of dark pigment in the skin. These patterns slowly drift, changing the animal's appearance apparently as turning predicted. Texture Texture is the perceived surface quality of a work of art. It is an element of two-dimensional and three-dimensional design and is distinguished by a perceived visual and physical properties. Use of texture along with other elements of design can convey a variety of message and emotions. There are two varieties of texture, physical texture and visual texture. Let us look at each of these. Physical texture. Physical texture, also known as actual texture or tactile texture, are the actual variations upon surface. This can include but is not limited to fur, wool, wood, grain, sand, smooth surfaces of canvas or metal, glass and leather. It differentiates itself from visual texture by having a physical quality that can be felt by touch. Specific use of a texture can affect the smoothness that an artwork conveys. For instance, use of rough surfaces can be visually active, whist smooth surfaces can be visually restful. The use of both can give the sense of personality to a design or utilized to create emphasis, rhythm or contrast. Light. Light is an important factor for physical artwork because it can be affect how a surface is viewed. Strong lights on a smooth surface can obscure the readability of a drawing or photograph. Whist they can create smooth contrast in a highly textual surface such as moss or pigs. Visual texture. Visual texture is the illusion of having physical texture. Every material and every support surface has its own visual texture and needs to be taken into consideration before creating a composition. As such, materials such as canvas and watercolor paper are considerably rougher than, for example, photo quality computer paper and many not be best suited for creating flat smooth texture. Photography drawings and paintings use visual texture both to property their subject matter, realistically and with interpretation. Texture in these media are generally created by the repetition of shape and line. Hypertexture Hypertexture can be defined as both realistic simulated surface texture produced by adding small distractions across the surface of an object. It is a new avenue for a describing the fluid morphic nature of texture in the realm of a cyber graphics and the transversely resp responsive works created in the field of visual arts. Finally, this module explained to select an appropriate source of inspiration for a given project. This project contains a clear link between the real world source of inspiration such as the jellyfish and conceptual design. It includes a superb range of techniques, the white and black work completed by blowing white ink through a straw and drawings upon found surfaces such as the grid match paper 
Amber demonstrates an awesome variations of line weight in this work using a simple medium to great effect. This project has a formal organized uncluttered presentation style with a minimum use of color. Items are positioned carefully allowing each piece of the design process to be appreciated fully. The project contains an investigation of detail and pattern with first hand observation of moths and butterflies. Informing subsequent design, this project is a place for testing and refining ideas. It shows experimentation with several textile techniques such as using a heat press, machine embroidery and boning. This allows a student to demonstrate an understanding of properties of mathematical and techniques to investigate how these can be used for their project. Each of these textile samples are derived from textures observed first hand. In this case, the absence of color focuses attention solely upon the surface qualities of the materials. This project has a confident analytical graphical style. This project boasts clever and bold heading colors which link to the design without dominating the page. The inclusion of the photographs helps to inform and illustrate stages of development. However, the students should be careful they do not use this space fill. Considering patterns, form and color alternatives. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you have learned to identify the different natural and man-made sources as possible starting points for a project. You also learn to distinguish between motifs, patterns, textures. This will help you select an appropriate source of inspiration for a given project. Thank you.